The thing about a cloud is because it's a virtualized environment, it's often true that um, one small hiccup could potentially uh, cascade and hurt a lot of users and bring down a lot of machines. So you really have to be uh, very attentive to that and be able to very quickly respond to those issues. We can now store more data than we can effectively use. Disks have become so big and so cheap that uh, we can store petabytes, soon to store exabytes, but how do we get it back and process it in a timely fashion? We need new techniques, new technologies, new database architectures that will allow us to use all the information that we can store. You need one configuration management database across uh, your cloud and non-cloud. So you need to be able to uh, look across the two. Even if the two physically separate CMDBs, you need to be able to look at them. And then uh, you, uh, on top of this, you need to set up a robust uh, change management procedure. Uh, you need to be able to look at the configuration items and see if uh, they are uh, set up correctly, and if they're not, then uh, making sure that they are. Um, you need to be um, uh, standard things that uh, uh, you need to do in incident, problem, change, uh, config, uh, et cetera, and ITIL. That's what you need to do. So one of the things that we're, we're seeing in organizations is this quick move towards interaction processing instead of just transaction processing. And in interaction processing, it can take a variety of shapes and forms. How, how you might uh, interact with your customers online versus how you might um, be able to use technology right in the shopping malls. So there, there's incentive to do, be proprietary in some ways to provide, but to, to make money, but there's also the question of if you're not interoperable with other, other, other vendors, then users may not be, be willing to give up that flexibility to use multiple providers. And I think another area that is uh, very um, important, and especially in large enterprises like IBM, is security and compliance. The, the business complexities that arise from those new types of ventures are, are very interesting and are challenging to the, the services uh, computing area. And one area they're challenging is, is to manage all of this data as it passes through multiple organizations. I mean, we're all used to going uh, to an ATM and withdrawing some money and we don't know how many com companies that transaction might process through, but we pretty much have trust in that. As these new technologies emerge and our data goes into them, and it goes into the, the stores that we might be crossing the threshold of, or it's shared uh, among stores or throughout the world, uh, it's going to be interesting in terms of what are those people going to tell us about how they use the data, and then once they have the data, how are they going to leverage it in and between amongst themselves uh, to, to produce value. So security, of course, you need to know who's got access, how frequently, um, how frequently, you have to look at the, the access of the users, you know, what their status is, what they have access to, make sure they're not getting access to anything that somebody else may have. Um, we also have to be very uh, attentive to the fact that much of the work that goes on in large enterprises can't be done on a public cloud has to be done within the confines of the secure infrastructure of the enterprise. So we also look at you know, who's using the cloud and, and also uh, providing back to them the inf this kind of information. They can't just go out and use, for instance, the Amazon cloud. The interoperability between uh, different cloud vendors, uh, different organizations is very important aspects of the cloud. And so, on one hand, you know, people talk about having standardizations, and uh, on the other hand, people say, well, you know, it's beyond just a hardware platform in terms of interoperable, but also have to go into the services. Uh, one of the, the key uh, direction people have been discussing in the last, you know, uh, months, you know, or. Uh, uh, not you know probably a year is talk about the API economy and actually people will put up their services 
under the uh, certain kinds of API such that they can invoke the API that will be self-defining and self, you know, uh, uh, defining in terms of protocol, but also self-defining in terms of the functions. And there's also the fact that given a fixed API, that doesn't mean that what happens underneath is not always going to be exactly the same, right? So the semantics of the operations have to match so that a, a user knows what, they're, what to expect. But that doesn't mean that you can't think that vendors couldn't differentiate themselves based on cost or uh, performance or whatever. So it doesn't really limit what the vendors can do, other, but it does help the users to basically make them able to use multiple providers. Many people, I think, because they uh, there's they tend to think cloud be, as being infinite resources that are free. And uh, that is really not the case. I think uh, most uh, either providers or users really are surprised when they realize that you know it's not it's it's cost effective, but it's not the silver bullet that I think you know on the hype curve you would have seen that people think oh cloud it's got to be free it's infinite and free, but it's not. Value contracts. And organizations that might be um, in interrelationships that are developing and deploying this new technology, they need to come to agreement about how they're going to share the data and what value it might deliver, and then maybe split up the pie based upon how everybody uh, uh, played in the interaction in that interorganizational uh, configuration. So that's going to be really tough in services computing, and that's an example, I think, of where big services meets big data is going to have to create some new insights uh, for things like value-based contracts. This is an exciting area in the sense that uh, there's plenty of opportunities. And then there's no major dominant player in order to grab all the uh, opportunities. And as a result, uh, whoever has a good idea, whoever can find out information uh, in, inside the conference, exchange the idea, actually will allow them uh, to get chances that wouldn't be discovered uh, earlier, uh, but if they can find it, then they really can uh, make a run and uh, let it go uh, with a research resource or with uh, more initiative to the industry. Point is not what needs to be done. The, that's clear, because that's laid out in ITIL pretty clearly. Uh, what is new, and this is what you need to pay attention to, is that the volume of the requests that come in on cloud are much higher than what comes in on uh, not cloud data centers. And so you need to automate a lot of your runbook, quote unquote. Uh, a runbook is a set of procedures that uh, uh, a, a person would run in a data center. And so if you are going to have service management in the cloud, you need to automate your runbook. And that's what uh, we have uh, focused a lot of time in IBM. So uh, you know the procedures for automating the runbook are very similar uh, to uh, the, the the not procedures. The frameworks are very familiar uh, uh, to people who are doing work in the cloud. So using Chef, Puppet, Heat, Tasca, so on and so forth. Right? These are uh, well-known uh, frameworks to do the automation. Uh, the knowledge of what to do is sometimes missing for the people who are doing the work. And that's where you, uh, you, uh, you need to go back and look at what ITIL asks you to do and build on top of that.